Uh, so today in class we were looking at uh, creating different surfaces that would represent terrain for an architectural model. Uh, the project we're working on is very kind of landscape oriented uh, and I realized that there are some tricks that make it a little easier to, to work with um, more fluid surfaces. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is just make a plane uh, and here we can make that and if I were to hit F10 or turn points on, here we go. Uh, I can control the corners. Now, I have my gumball turned on, so I can just raise and lower a corner. Um, but obviously, this isn't much of a, a topography. So if I go and rebuild the surface, I can actually increase the number of point counts. And I'll do something like 6 by 6. The degree feature down here is the, the number of points it looks like looks at to determine the position of the surface in between those points. So a three degree surface here would be looking at the first, second, and third uh, points to determine the position of the first area. So it's, a, it's an average of those points. So say OK. You can see here we have a little something different. I'm going to hit F10. Actually, I'm going to hit points on because if I hit F10, my recording will stop. Um, and now I can edit smaller pieces of the surface. So what you can see here is this point is actually averaging this point, that point, and that point, and also this point and that point to come up with the position of that surface. That's why we pull the point up, but the surface doesn't come up and meet the point. Um, so I'll just make a little bit of adjustments to this thing and pretend that this is now the, the topo surface I want to be working with. Um, what I find is really helpful once we have that is to come into plan um, and draw whatever it is in, uh, in plan that I want to embed. So the building, as we've talked about, can be below the grade, uh, at grade, straddling the grade, or even above grade. Uh, for this, I'm going to just draw a simple circle, um, and I can project that. So I'll use the command project. I'm going to project the circle onto the topo surface, um, and that gives me this kind of uh, trying or this 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 warped circle that represents the uh, uh, the projection of the circle below. I'll then trim my surface out, so I have that. And I could come in and loft, oops, there we go. I can loft these two circles together to create, like, say, retaining walls. Um, if I really wanted to, I could come in and take that surface, move it up um, some amount, and then loft this all the way around, say OK. This, I'm going to offset surface. Offset surface is the command. Uh, I'll flip it in, and I'll say that we're going to do a distance of, say, that far. And now I have an actual retaining wall embedded in the earth. Now this has a flat bottom, which is great. Um, one of the things we didn't cover in the class, but something I want to show, is uh, sometimes we need to do ramps. And a way that I found is easier to do ramps. It's not always the easiest. Um, but if I take this curve, um, I'm just going to make a copy of it. And I'm, I like to do this pretty often. I'm going to just copy it up, say 50 feet. Uh, that's more. So let's do 150 feet. I'll also take the, the bottom curve here. I'm going to copy that 150 feet over. Now, I want to take and make a ramp that comes from about here above to let's imagine it comes over here. So I want to then, what do I want to do here? I'm going to draw just vertical lines. So these will be uh, perpendicular. So turned on. And this one comes up. I'm going to trim uh, my curves one on the top to the bottom. So is splitting here. We're going to trim this and trim. Oh, got that backwards. Trim this and trim that. That doesn't make sense. There. Hmm. Yeah, okay. No, this makes sense. What I want to do is to take just, I need to break this curve. So I need this subcurve in here. There's another way you can do that. With these circles, I can actually take a subcurve. And I can say from here, I want this piece of that curve. And this one here, the command again is subcurve. I want this piece of that curve. Sorry, this curve here. 
Maybe I want this piece, there we go. And I'm gonna blend. So I'll blend this curve into that curve. And what that does is it creates, it follows the contours of this shape, but it comes around and it changes the height in uh, elevation. And the reason I might wanna do that then is to copy this back 150 feet and you can see that it doesn't perfectly align with our surface. But I can use the command pull. I want to pull this curve onto these surfaces. That will give me a pretty good approximation of where a ramp needs to be. I'm going to join those because they're not joined. Join I'll offset, not offset surface, but just offset. And I'm going to draw a distance here. Let's say it's going to be a ramp that's that wide there. And then with these two things, I can loft. And what that does is it takes uh, what will be the, you know, the same height here and the same height there uh, and creates a ramp that there's a little bit of distortion. We can definitely find ways to make cleaner pieces of geometry. The other part we were talking about is once the surface has been split or changed, I can hit F10 or turn points on, and I can continue to edit the surface. Um, you can also see that there are points within the surface that we've removed that still affect the surface. It's essentially because we have just a piece of the surface left, a uh, sampling of that surface's domain. Um, the control points are from the original surface. It's just something that you have to be cautious of and, and know will be there. Um, the other thing we did today is look at uh, more complicated surfaces. So we, we first started by saying that I could extrude, right? I can extrude this. It's a very basic surface. Uh, I can also loft. So if I loft between these two things, I get a more complicated surface. Um, but to me, one of the most complicated and, and nuanced surfaces you can get uh, is the curved network. Uh, now, a curved network is something I set up an example down here. I'm going to delete this here and turn on layer 4. A curved network is something that takes into uh, account a lot of different pieces of geometry. Um, you want to work with all open curves or all closed curves. These are open curves right here because they don't wrap around and close on themselves. If you start to hybridize some open and some closed, it will give you an error. So what I did here in, uh, say, section is define a series of uh, sections along a path and how the walls and the terrain varies along that path. I then, in plan, first created a, a couple uh, lines for myself here that showed where the path was going to go. And then I oriented uh, all of these sections along the pathway here. You can see that these sections are made up first of curves and then of polylines, and then they've been joined together. Then I come in, and let's just delete this one. I'm gonna make a new polyline, and I'm gonna connect all of the uh, same points on the path. So this is like the top of the curb. Um, and you can see I've done that for the, the base of the path, the top of the curve, the inside of the curve, and the base where the ground would meet the wall. Um, on the outside here, I have other uh, controlling paths, and you know, if I want, I can, I can move this stuff up and down. I can come in and edit any one of these things or multiples at once and say, oh, really, I want this to be more of a hill, more of a flat plateau. Uh, if I really wanted to get tricky, I can take all of this stuff and type the command set point SPT, um, and I can tell it that I want to set all of these things to the same X, the same Y, or the same Z. Right now I'm going to say just the same Z, and if I put there, now all of those control points are in the exact same uh, elevation. Knowing that, I can take all of this stuff, all of these lines that I've constructed, and go to Surface, Curve Network. Um, this gives me a little bit of control. I can say how closely tied to these they need to be, or if they can be loose. But I'll say OK, and that generates this uh, poly surface. I think, actually, you know what? I don't think this is a poly surface. The, the good thing with this is that it's actually a single surface. Uh, sometimes when we join things together, we end up with poly surfaces that can be harder to work with uh, in Grasshopper and in, in Boolean. Um, this is a, a clean single surface. Now you can see when things come up and over that we don't have that real tight control of that wall. Um, but it is something that it, we can work with. Um, and I'll go into a rendered view just to show you. Um, I can also select the curves and hide those curves. Um, I can also turn on control points and come in and edit any portion of this uh, surface. Now, 
it's, it's not going to be very good because it's going to. There's a lot of control points to edit, and let's see if we can do a soft uh, edit surface. Soft edit surface is a way to slowly manipulate something. Select surface this uh, base point. Let's edit that base point. It's on the surface. Um, this right now is only allowing me to move it into the surface normal, but let's change our distance here to be 10 by 10. And now I can come in and make subtle manipulations uh, where we can reduce that surface. Here again, I could pull down a little bit on that surface. So this is just another tool that we can use to sculpt terrain in a way, um, instead of going in and adding the control points. When all said and done, um, you know, it's, it's a little bit different. It's, it's definitely different than working with architectural geometry. Uh, but the tools are there in Rhino to, to work in an architectural way to create terrain. Uh, so I hope that helps.